What's up everybody? Uh, today I decided to just do a little video um, exploring some Photoshop generative AI stuff. And uh, I have a little game uh, to start off. So I want you guys to look and think about what you think is fake in this image. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. I don't know if you saw these little uh, deer here, but believe it or not, they're actually fake. Who would have thought, you know, uh, there's a little deer. Yeah, and that, that mountain's fake. Yeah, the, those buildings are fake. Yeah, that little tree just down there, like right there, in the kind of middle right, that's that's fake. Okay, can you spot anything else? I, I don't know, yeah, that, the, that little like, power line that's fake. Now, what else do you guys think is fake? Think really carefully about this. This is very important. The plane. Did you guys think the plane was fake? Because it is. Now, right, can you guys spot anything else that is fake in this photo? That's right, the fire's fake. I mean, come on, like, do you actually believe that they're, like that thing would be breathing fire? Like, that's stupid. Um, yeah, so that fire's fake. Yeah, so the house is actually fake too. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys would uh, could spot anything else, but the house was fake. And there you go. Like, now we actually only have one more thing that's fake in the image. I don't know if you guys can spot it. Give you a few seconds. Yep. Yeah, oh, there you go. All right. So now this is actually the completed um, original image and uh, nothing has been added and nothing's been taken away with Photoshop Generative AI um, and it's pretty pretty impressive right I mean I'll start adding some of the stuff back here and uh, just to show you like what we started with and uh, it's just pretty insane I mean how many of you guys knew like that how many, how many of you guys knew that like every single one of those things was fake I don't know I don't know. I know. I know it's fake. Maybe it doesn't look believable at all. But yeah, so we're gonna take it all away again. And just like that, you have the original image, which is uh pretty crazy. Just the original original image. Um, it's everything that was originally there. It's, it's crazy. I, the original photo that I took. I, it's uh cra crazy. And for those of you who don't know, Photoshop Generative Fill is an AI tool that Photoshop created and it's still in the beta testing phase. Um, so it's crazy to think that this isn't even the finished product that Photoshop is putting onto their actual Photoshop app. You have to download the separate Photoshop beta app and it's crazy. I mean, some of the results that you'll get when you type in something that isn't real, like I was uh, I typed in giant roaming the earth or something and it would come up with this crazy stuff that like isn't it doesn't even look like a real thing um and you can tell it struggles with living animals and things to put into an image they look kind of like boys um but like it's crazy that this is like here and this is a thing um uh i'll show you how it works all right um <clears throat> Here we are in Photoshop and it's pretty, this is Photoshop beta as you can see up here and it's uh, pretty easy to use, to use it. You just need to go into your select tool. I think the most convenient one is uh, is the rectangular mark D tool. I guess if you're adding stuff in like this. Um, and yes, yeah, so let's say we want to add, I don't know, a giant, a giant tree coming from right here you just do that you uh, right click and press generate a fill and I'll give you a prompt let's say I want to add giant tree giant tree it takes a little bit to load And just like that, I mean, it's crazy. Like, you know, 
it doesn't look like that tree is supposed to be there. And if you zoom in, you can tell like that doesn't belong. But I mean, if you're looking at it and uh, also you can tell that there's a difference in green. It like smooths out the green. It, like, it can't replicate um, the, that, that sort of fine green. But when you zoom out, like that looks, you cannot tell. Um, and you know, I'm trying to, now like say what if we wanted to remove this mountain right here. Turn to fill. Just say remove mountain. And last time I was using it, it gave me three different options. I'm trying to figure out how that works. Yeah, I mean, it's gone. Like, and I can show you before and after. Like, that's crazy. Um, oh yeah, here, you have your variations, so, say you didn't like that, choose that one, and I like that one. Um, now what I've seen advertised a lot is people, um, expanding the image itself. Now what I think I have to do for that... Well, the friggin' spinning wheel. Um, and now what I think I have to do for that is place the image on a larger plane, like give it a larger background. Now I'm just going to shrink this. yeah okay so what I've seen people do is select say just this let's just go for the just go for the whole thing I've seen people select this whole thing generate a fill you say like extend border okay <laughs> so that's not what I was expecting <laughs> it looks like it tried to take my words and like fill the image with them so if i could be more maybe i should be more specific with it like darren and phil oh you know what it is i bet it wants me to, i bet it wants me to go more something like this. You know what? I think it I think it might want a little bit of the picture like with it so it can like work off of that. So we'll go like this. We'll generative fill. Extend image extend image and we'll see what happens okay again very weird a, a little worrying I I do not like that but it always gives you variations <laughs> what <laughs> yeah so that's something that's a little weird about generator fill. Okay, what's our third option? Someone holding a, you know what? I think it was just because, oh, you know what it is? I think I've seen people, if you just, it's because I put the word image in there and then it has people holding an image. So if I just press generate, with nothing in the prompt. I think then it'll just take what's there and just roll with it. Um, yeah, okay. That's what I'm talking about. 
Okay, and let's let's try what we were doing before. Take this, just the whole thing. Generative fill. Let's just generate. Let's just generate more by itself. <laughs> okay. Again, not what I was expecting, but still interesting. Here, let's try. I, I just want to. I want to extend. If I use the lasso tool that might work better so you have like this bit select inverse so now we selected everything but this bit and now we are going to generate a fill all of it generate let's go I have a good feeling about this one Okay, that's insane. Um, yeah, so definitely likes to repeat the like patterns. So if you don't, because you know, you have this and that, and each time it gets a little bit more messed up. Um, so you know, not as powerful of a tool as I thought it was. It really likes to repeat the same thing. So, you know, everyone who's like adding stuff onto it, you know, like adding a board, like adding more to the image, it's usually like grass or something, but it's really easy to just repeat. Um, Cause yeah, it really likes patterns. Let's try one more. Okay, um, this is a picture I recently took of my sister. And it was uh, in the Cape. I actually published a video about going to the Cape. You guys should check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, and a photo book. Check that out too. Some shameless, shameless self-promotion. So yeah, this, um, this photo has like just some recurring patterns of water. So I thought I might try to add to that because we haven't done any, anything like that yet. Or I mean, we have tried, but here, I will this boom delete this layer okay and now we have a lot more room uh let's just you know what let's make it a panorama so let's go like right here and add right here add generate fill nothing should just fill in what it already has wow that's crazy okay what i'm really surprised about is how it got this sort of you know there's something reflecting on the top of the ripples of the water here in the i think that was in the original photo and it kind of ran with it and it just kept, and it kind of filled it out to make it even, like, just very believable. Um, yeah, let's try to do this side now. Make this a whole, a whole panorama. So, uh, purple lines. I don't know. No purple lines. It's fine. Generate fill. Generate. Now, this is going to be... A little weirder because you have a flower pot here and we're gonna know if it's like not rendering that flower pot correctly yeah weird i mean it does very well with patterns i just say it can it just repeats them and it gets the shadows and everything completely correct if you want to go like this if that's going to be your photo like that works Okay, you know what? It thinks that it's underwater up here. <laughs> um, but like, still, just very surprising, like, just how well it works. Okay, you know what? I want to try something. I'm wondering if I just take this and just extend it, like, all the way out here and just generate a fill.
Okay, so it doesn't want to continue it being water. It thinks we're at a beach. And that's just, I don't know, something about, something about generative fill, like just like adding sort of people-esque shapes. Very, very disconcerting. Very weird. Um, here, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. It's fun. Okay. What if I just do like water? What if I, I just want water? Yeah, doesn't want to just do water, which kind of makes sense. All right, now I just want to go crazy. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna generative fill this whole thing. Just, just, just fill it. Let's just fill it. Okay, that's weird. I don't know what that is, but the rest of it looks really good. Boom, we're filling it. Generative, generative style. My guess is that it's just gonna continue those flowers, these flowers down here, it's just gonna like keep going. Yeah, it kind of kept going, except like, you know what? I can see a world where this is like some really interesting art happening, you know? Like, I can see a space where this is like a very, very interesting art for people to look at. Like you have the base image in the middle and then you've just like used this AI to like fill in the rest. I mean, and there's something off about it. it it's really, it's really interesting. Cause you know, it tries to replicate like how we see things and like what we want, like what we want to see and what we see as normal, but it's, it's not like ex exact, precise. If you zoom in, obviously it's like, it starts to, to sort of decompose. <laughs> but like that mountain looks really good. Like, and I'm wondering like if, cause you know, AI is trained with just a thousand, like not a thousand, like m hundreds of millions of just images. And I'm wondering if, you know, maybe that mountain was just ripped off from a different image. And then you have a whole conversation about, uh, you know, what is copyrighted? Like, is it, is it okay for it to be trained off of all of these other people's image images? Like. I mean, in my opinion, like, probably not. But, you know, who knows? Because it is a robot. I mean, it's kind of uncharted territory. Let's just do this last little bit down here. And I'm surprised it takes this long for just like a tiny little piece, you know? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, that's insane. And yeah, I could totally see, you know, myself doing like a whole sort of line of photos where I'll take my photo and we'll just let the AI expand it and just, you know, see what happens. It, it, it could be a really interesting sort of study. Oh, okay, what is some interesting stuff going on up there? Don't know what that is. But like, it's an interesting thing to kind of just like look at. I mean, the original photo was like here. So like, that's crazy. And uh, let's see if I can turn the opacity. Yeah, boom. So you have original photo, boom. Original photo, like that's insane. And that was Photoshop uh, generative fill. I mean, my opinions on it are kind of blurred. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure what to think about it so far. I mean, on the one hand, it is very cool. It is just like insane that you can do something like that um, and that quickly with like a photo. I think for logistic things like removing people, um, even for some like fine art photography stuff, like if you have people in your photo and you don't want them there, like that could, that's a great fix. Um, say it's like a, a sweeping landscape and it's just this like, couple in the foreground that's just ruining the photo um but for me as a photographer I've always kind of had an issue with changing the photo itself I mean I do like a lot of street photography and sort of art photography landscapes and I always try to keep the image close to how it was originally um 
while still being able to make it like a really an interesting image. And it's crazy to think that like some images that you're looking at could be completely fabricated, like they've never even were taken. And at that point, like, is it even photography? Is it even digital art? Because like, you're not making anything, I guess. Um, it's really just like the robot doing it. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things. I mean, I, I think it's, it's a lot of it is good, but I think it could lead to a lot of sort of laziness and um, a lot of it could be bad. I think it'll just force, I think it'll force, um, you know, fine art photographers, people to, and, and just people in general to think like, you know, what is photography? Like, what do I want? If I'm buying a piece of art, like I don't want it to be made by a robot. So maybe people will come up with a way to make sure, like to prove that it, their photography, that for their photography is like real, you know, there'll be people who use it people, and people who don't. And that's kind of always how it's been. I feel like it's, you know, there are people who just take the photo and that's it, that's the piece, or they edited a bunch in um, Lightroom and Photoshop and it's like not even the same photo. So to that degree, I think a lot of it hasn't changed. But yeah, I'm, sh I'm not sure what to think. I I'm excited to see what it's gonna end up being. Like maybe it'll just be a fad and people will realize that like, it'll never get to the point where like, you could just add anything because it's not at that point yet. You can add a lot, but it, it needs to be believable. Um, and yeah, I wonder like maybe that maybe there'll be a day, a day where you'll just take a tiny bit of an image and then just like expand it to this giant thing. And at that point, like, yeah, that's not really photography. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about it. Um, I probably won't be using it very much because I I prefer to be taking photos that are that. Well, the real reason I like photography is because it is a real thing that happened and like you're capturing that real moment and that's kind of the art of it. Um, or like I said, I think I could see myself playing with it in a way where you're not trying to pass it off as like a photo, you know, it's more like a digital artwork experimental thing, you know, where I was expanding it to beyond the images thing and just seeing what it does, the AI does. And that could be just an interesting thing for like an art gallery or or like a photo book to see um, like what the computer is capable of and what it does. Um, but yeah, that's awesome if you made it this far in the video. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you should check out my website if you want to check out more of my work. I have photo books, prints, my portfolio and stuff there. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>